everybody. Welcome back to Sense of South Jersey with me, Kellen, for another fragrance video. Got sort of a list video for you guys today. I haven't done one of those in a while. I've pretty much been sticking to individual reviews of fragrances that I really wanted to just kind of uh, give my opinion on for a while. But uh, today I've got four fragrances that I've brought into my collection that are new to my collection that I wanted to share with you guys and also a package from fragrancebuy.ca with some two fragrances I want to do first impressions on. So, um, you know, I've been selling off a lot of the fragrances in my collection that I just never use, but I've had my eye on a few of them that I've wanted to try for a while, and then one that I got on vacation. So I got four fragrances that are new to my collection, and then, of course, the two fragrances we'll do for the first impressions. So uh, before we get started, I want to say if you are new to the channel and you enjoy the type of videos that I make, classic men's fragrant content reviews and lists, make sure to subscribe to support the channel, hit that red button, and if you have an Instagram, go ahead ahead and check out the Sense of South Jersey Instagram page for news and updates on the channel, photos of fragrances from my collection, and scent of the day stories that I put up, you know, most of the time on a regular basis too. So um, let's not waste any more time and let's take a look at these new additions. Okay, so the fragrance that I'm going to talk about first on this list is new to my collection. Um, it's from the house, the Italian house of Pino Silvestre. And now there's almost zero information about this fragrance online. I looked up and down. I was able to find it on eBay, um, but that's about it. Like it was just the seller that was selling the one fragrance. You know, there was no information, no date. I don't know when it came out. I don't know anything about it. I don't know the notes. Um, I have no idea. So I'm just going to talk about it. It was one that I saw and based on the look of the fragrance, because I couldn't find any information, which is why I purchased it. It's Pinot Silvestre's Golf. So it's got a golf theme to it. You can see the bottle here. I just took the cap off because it's really hard to get off here. You can see it goes on. You can definitely pick it up by the cap. It's got, you know, nice yellow juice. You can see it's got the you know, image of the golfer on the top there and right here as well on the box. So when I got this one, you can see here and on the bottom. So I would love to know if any of you guys know anything about Pinot Silvestre Golf. When I got this fragrance, I'm expecting a green pine outdoorsy sort of like trophy by Lancome something like that maybe this was their version of it a cheaper version of it um, but what I got was something way different it's almost like a fruity more modern smelling like a cheap Armani code that's what I was reminded of immediately when I smelled this one so um, again zero background information on it was sort of disappointed with the smell um, doesn't smell bad, but again, it's not what I was expecting. The look of this bottle, I was thinking green, and I got sort of a fruity, modern scent to it. So if anyone knows anything about this, definitely let me know. So this is the first one I wanted to talk about. I don't have more information than that on it. Um, it's really not worth talking about too much more about this one, but yeah, I just wanted to bring light on of it because Pinot Silvestre is a fragrance that I love, the original pine scent, and this is zero, and I mean zero affiliation with that in terms of the scent. Okay, so the second fragrance I want to talk about that I just brought into my collection, actually really old fragrance. You know, it came out in 1958. It's from the house of Revlon. It is the Aromatic Fougere, and it is called That Man. That Man by Revlon, too. So really cool name. Um, and this fragrance here is, again, it's an Aromatic Fougere. It's pretty citrus heavy in the opening, but it's got this sort of green powdery sort of almost makeup scent but it's still masculine it's a citrus green there's definitely some mossiness in there but when it's on for a little while it sort of has that sort of smell like a little hint of the inside of like a leather bag um you know how people say that and many many reviewers say that that dior ohm uh i guess 2012 has that iris note or something like that that gives it sort of a lipstick or makeup vibe I don't know, obviously I don't think this has that, but that's kind of what I thought of when I first smelled it. But once it dries down, it's like a woody green, soapy citrus smell, and it's really nice, definitely masculine. Um, you can see it here, the sprayer right on top there, and uh, you know the distribution on this one is pretty good. The, um, the box is pretty funny. It's, it's, it's definitely old school. They even have, I was able to track down an aftershave for like dirt cheap for that man. This one is a splash bottle. Used it one time, shaved with it one time, put this up on the story. Um, but I haven't really talked about it since, aside from just posting it on the Instagram. Too. So it's funny, the, the backstory with this one is that Elizabeth Arden, and this is what I found on the line, so how true it is, I don't know, but Elizabeth Arden hated Charles Revson, the, you know, the owner of Revlon, and she always referred to him as that man. 
Um, so out of spite, he came out with the fragrance called That Man to kind of stick it to her, which I thought was pretty funny. But you can still get this one. It's inexpensive. It's a classic citrus aromatic fougere with some green notes in there. But it's unique in that it has this soapy sort of makeup vibe um, scent. But it is, it is still very masculine. I get the soapy greenness and citrus the most. But there's an underlying note in there to which me smelled sort of like a makeup powder of some sort. All right, the next fragrance I want to talk about is one that I got when I was on vacation. So again, if you follow the Instagram page recently, I was in Key West, was down there for I think eight days and it was a blast. And one store I went into, they have a lot of boutique shops, like shops where I was able to buy shirts like this. I got this one from Key West, really nice clothing. Um, and you know, obviously vacation spots have knickknacks galore, all that type of stuff. But one place we went into after a brunch had some cologne. And they had some uh, niche stuff. They had some DS and Durger. They had Diptyque. And then I saw, which I wasn't really as interested in, but I did, you know, take a look at them and smelled some of them, which was cool. It was just nice to do that. And then I went and I saw the section where they had some Santa Maria Novella Aqua di Colonia. So I got the Vetiver edition. You can see that here. Beautiful bottle. Um, it actually comes as a splash but they tie up in a nice gift bag and atomizer, which is, is nicer for this fragrance because it is expensive. I think this one was 160. I paid retail for it because I was there, I was on vacation. I was coming from a brunch, had a few drinks, didn't really care, definitely wanted to have it. So I smelled the original one while I was in that store and I was a little bit, it was nice. It smelled nice, the just the original Santa Maria Novella Aqua di Colonia, but to me it smelled somewhat common. I already have Aqua de Parma. I've got stuff that smells like Aqua de Parma Colonia. So I put that one down, but when I smell this vetiver one, and I'm gonna spray some here on a tester strip, this one was, I was like, wow, I was really impressed by this one. And just look at the, just the detail in the bottle, the embossed glass there, vetiver there, etched in the glass. This stuff smells amazing. It's got that fougere, sheeper vibe. It's, it's green, it's got an earthy note to it, but it's also fresh and clean, very, very upscale, high end. Like I wouldn't wear this one on a regular basis. Um, I would probably just you know save it for more so special occasions. Definitely like a nice summer scent. Probably could be worn all year, but I was wearing it down there because I was having a blast. Every night we'd go out, I you know put a different, but a shirt like this, um, you know, you know, just a nice either white or, you know, sort of brighter color shirt with a different cuff. You spray this stuff on, it, it really goes hand in hand. Now the vetiver, it isn't like a vetiver where I would be turned off because it's too earthy. Say like, what's that one from um, uh, Lalique? You know, I, I forget the one, where the, where, what they're called, but they're really difficult vetivers. It's not like Guerlain's vetiver. This is a special one and it's sort of like a citrus infused vetiver. I really like it. Um, very, very high end. I wouldn't use it as a splash. I like to keep it as a spray. And it's extremely long lasting on skin and even more so on clothing. That's the one thing I noticed about this one. It being a fresher scent, it doesn't just go away after a few hours. It lasted a long time, especially on fabric too. So that's Aqua di Colonia by Santa Maria Novella. And this is the Vetiver edition. All right, so the last fragrance I wanna talk about on this list is one that I got just the other day. It is a fragrance that is hard to find in the United, in the United States. I don't think you can get it. I think it's only in Europe and a, a subscriber and Instagram follower who lives overseas, not in the United States, actually told me about it, described it. I asked him what that was because he sent me a photo and this was in the background and I was like, wow, what is that? And it's a fragrance called Rouge by Scorpio. So, you know, he was telling me that it is a inexpensive, sort of drugstore classic slash TJ Maxx, Marshalls type of uh, rack store over there. I think it's TK Maxx, but it's from the house of Scorpio and it's Rouge. I think this was their, their initial very first one. They have a bunch of them. Pretty cool box. It's totally got that drugstore vibe, totally has you know the glass, but with a really cheap plastic cap on. Um, you can pick it up by the cap and you, know, you see the, the, the crimp showing, no neck, and it's got the atomizer. So let's uh, you know, take a look at this one here. Um, when you spray this on, you're instantly reminded of Dracar Noir clones, um, just a little bit sweeter than Dracar, spicier, kind of has a bit of cinnamon in there, um, but it does have the green notes. It definitely has that reminiscence of Dracar Noir. Actually, what it reminds me of is Montana Parfum de Homme, that one more so than Dracar Noir, because that one has a little bit of the you know sweeter and spicier dry down, where Dracar Noir is greener. So this isn't as green, but it changes to almost like a smokier cinnamon, oak mossy type of scent. It's, it's different. 
And it's not too sweet to where I would find it cloying or like a gourmand or anything like that. It's not like that at all. It's still an 80s masculine fragrance. I think it came out in 1989. They have a million other ones. It's obviously sort of like uh, a semi-clone house, just but an inexpensive fragrance. They do make some body line products. I'm unable to track them down because they are harder to find in the USA. But I think there is an eBay seller that has an aftershave. And I would get it because I would wear this. It's a 75 ml bottle. Pretty cool. It's transparent. You can see the juice there. It's a little scorpion on the top, but it's it's such a cheap, it's a funny presentation, and but it's a it's a great smell. Now there's notes of mint and lavender in here too, so it's, it has like a freshness about it as, as well with the kind of other spicy notes. So it's a nice blend, not nearly as many notes as Dracar Noir has, but this one, um, from what I've seen, at least not for Grantica, is is less notes, but it still has this the same vibe. It's in the same family. And it's a nice, it's a nice cheap clone, you know, for work, perfect. If you wanted to wear it going out, or if you wanted to just wear it to something like the gym, you totally could do that too. I think this one's pretty cool. Um, the, the name Scorpio reminds me of that like cheesy '80s band that you listen to in high school in the weight room when the coach put it on, like "Rocky Like a Hurricane," you know, "Here I Am," "Rock Me Like a Cheap Clone of Dracar." So that's where I'm at with this one. Definitely want to give it some more wear. Definitely want to, you know, give all of these some more wear. Except for this one. This one kind of sucks. I'm sort of disappointed with this one. But the, the rest of these I'm really happy with, and they all range from different levels of cost and you know years and style. Okay guys, time for the first impression. So here is a box from fragrancebuy.ca. I have three fragrances in here. Uh, one is Insanse by Givenchy, and the other one is Eau de Rochas. The third fragrance is Aqua de Selva, which I'm not gonna do a first impression on. I actually bought that for a friend of mine who really liked it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pause the video real quick and be right back after I open this box. Okay, so I'm back. We've got the packaging peanuts here from the box. They always do a really nice job at, at protecting all of the fragrances. So we've got Eau de Rochas here. This one is sealed. Uh, Insanse by Givenchy is not. This is a 50 ml, but it is vintage. It's probably why it's not sealed. And then, of course, like I mentioned, we have the classic Italian Aqua de Selva. But again, we're not going to talk about that one, too. So let's do the Insanse because this one is open. It actually does have a little sticker here. It looks like they put that. I can slice that right open. Um, and let's check it out here. Let's take a look at this. This is a 50 ml. Um, pretty nice looking box here, you know, pretty bright colors. Mr. Smelly raved about this one, which encouraged me to check it out. So cap here, looks like it does click into place. Um, you know, the bottle looks like it's a little older. So the batch code on this one is very hard to read here. looks like 104220. You can see it's kind of etched in there. You're probably not gonna be able to read it here too. So pretty cool looking bottle. Um, this is a fougere, but a fresher fougere. I don't know much about it. Let's just give it a shot here. This, oh no, that was used. Whoops. Here we go. Mm, sweet, definitely sort of sweet. I get some citrus, but Spray one more. And again, these are cards. It's not going to be the same. I really can't pick. This is a sweet citrus is what I smell so far. Sort of like a candy vibe I get. So far, not blown away. I would have to spend more time with it. So sort of a sweet lemon candy, but thicker with like a lemon candy and, and some sort of a syrupy scent. I typically don't like that. But again, this is the first impression. Doesn't mean anything until you actually wear it on skin. So maybe some lime in there too. It's, it's clean. It seems like a clean, fresher scent. Um, but that's about as much as I can detect with it right now. Something I'm going to have to wear. If it's one that I really start liking, obviously I would buy more because this is a small bottle. And the way I wear fragrances, I would go through this one really quick. But sort of a citrusy, candy sweet. That's what I'm getting from this one. Not so much of an incense or, or anything else. I don't really detect a fougere, even though that's what it's considered, but I'll have to spend more time. Okay, next is Eau de Rochas by the House of Rochas. So I already took it out of the cellophane, so let's open it up. You guys can see the box. So what I've heard about this one it is that a really bright citrus, hot day, summer day type of fragrance. So I was excited to try it. Harder to find, but this was cheap. It was only 18 bucks. That's why I threw that in there. I'm like, oh, why not? The Insanse was a little bit more expensive. I think they have that one for $70. Um, and then the Aqua de Selva was always inexpensive, but it's still awesome. Uh, all right, let's open this one up. 
Look at that bottle. Sort of reminds me of a Cerruti 1881 bottle. We got some sort of just, you know, the pattern here, but you can see Eau de Rochas right there on the back, but then the back is like some sort of marble or granite cap is, is pretty, pretty on there, pretty tight. Nice looking bottle. Let's check this one out. Yep, that's what it is. I sit, this is almost like an eau sauvage, but almost more lemony. So perfect for a hot day. I don't think there's really much more to say about this right now on a first impression than that. Citrus, fresh, hot day. A little bit of what I maybe smell some like cucumber in there. I don't even know if that's a note I didn't even look. But this is cool. I mean, I automatically like this. See, like this is something I could get my dad this. I know he would wear it. If you like Aqua de Parma Colonia, if you like, you know, like I mentioned, if you like citrus forward scents, if you like uh, Eau Sauvage, definitely this is in that vein. But it's got this like sort of cucumber uh, scent, which is a little bit brighter, a little bit cleaner. I actually, this is pretty cool. So, so far out of the two, I like this one more than this one. Um, and this one was supposed to be the more rare or vintage one that's discontinued too. So I don't know, going to have to spend more time with both of them, but this one's just easier to like. And I could see you spray a ton of this one on and you don't have to worry about it. Obviously, I can tell right away this would be a scent that you wear in the hot weather. Yeah, this is nice. I like this one. It's very clean. I definitely would buy more of this just based on my first impression. The other one, not so much yet. Again, going to have to give it more time. I usually judge harsher on first impressions, but I've learned not to do that because I've had it where I've like thought I've liked something like Dolce Gabbana by man, but I think I was just really psyched up about how rare it was. And then you wear it and it's totally just like a complete piece of garbage. Where this one, you know, it's, it's simple. It's simple. I already can tell that it's one that is easy wear, very clean wear. Might make it my scent of the day today because right now I'm wearing no fragrance. I've just wanted to do all these card sprays. All right, everyone. Well, that'll wrap it up for me. That's the four fragrances that are newer to my collection and my two first impressions. Again, Eau de Rochage and Insanse by Givenchy. So um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Please let me know in the comments section. Have you heard of any of the four that I mentioned? Do you know anything about golf? Have you tried Batman? Um, are you a fan of the Santa Maria Novella's Aqua de Colonia line? Please let me know. And of course, are you a fan of Scorpio Rouge? Because I really like that one for being a cheap sort of Jacar Noir family line uh, style fragrance. It, it's not bad at all. Definitely an easy wear, dumb reach type of fragrance too. So, and as far as the first impressions, I would love to know more about Insanse and obviously just hear from you guys about anything. So thank you so much for watching, hanging out with me today. As I said, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Again, I really appreciate it. We're growing, we're on our way to 10,000. It's a huge milestone for me. And uh, if you have the Instagram, check out the Sense of South Jersey Instagram page for news and updates on the channel, blah, 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 blah. You know what I always say. And, um, you know, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.